What is happening, boys and girls? Jim here, RCAD, Christmas Day 2021. To me, a Terror Scorcher unboxing video. So we're going to do a limited unboxing video here. We're going to check out everything that's on the box, everything that the box has to say. Open up the box, see what the contents look like, see what everything looks like on the inside, and then we'll be doing a build video on this one later. Uh, for those who watch my channel, this is my niece's vehicle. I got her this for Christmas this year. And this will be my niece's very first RC car build. She's built lots of Lego kits and Lego Technic kits and things of that nature. But she's never built an RC car. So this is her first one, and she's looking forward to the build. So we got the Tamiya Terra Scorcher. This is a re-release version from the 1988 version. One-tenth scale, high performance, re-released and updated version of the 1988 Hit Buggy Terra Scorcher. Four-wheel double wishbone suspension with CVA oil dampers and stabilizers. 17, 11, 50, and four 850 ball bearings included. Universal drive shafts, grippy spike tires, 540 type motor, shaft driven four wheel drive. Includes an electronic forward and reverse speed controller. No transmitter, no steering servo, but it does come with an ESC. And here's a quick peek at our chassis. We'll get the camera off the tripod here and look at the box after everything is all said and done. Flipping the box over, zooming in here on one of our portions of it. Let's turn up our brightness a wee bit there. We have our front bumper, front oil filled shocks or oil dampers, front stabilizer or sway bar, ESC, even though it says not included here, it does include the ESC, bathtub, chassis, or frame, showing a picture of where the receiver goes, our battery, rear oil filled shocks, rear stabilizer, and our pin spike tires. Panning along, this is an updated release version of the Terra Scorcher, the original of which was first released in 1988. Length is 390 millimeters, width is 240 millimeters, height is 130 millimeters. The chassis consists of a lightweight and tough bathtub frame plus front and rear gearboxes with suspension attached. Four wheel double wishbone suspension it uses CVA oil dampers for superior ride and threaded shaft upper arms to allow easy camber adjustment. Stabilizers come as standard front and rear. Power is officially supplied via front and rear differential gears, sealed gearboxes, and then universal shaft. Uses adjusters and three-piece tie rod setup to alter the toe, and the body and wing are molded in clear polycarbonate. Then it says that in a few different languages. We got a picture of our front gearbox and our rear gearbox, our oil-filled shocks, our stabilizer, and our upper and lower control arms, along with our pin spike tires. One-tenth scale. Looking at the other side of the box, we've got another blow up of the basic chassis with a bunch of numbers on here, 1 through 23. And then a list on the side over here, 1 through 23, listing what all of our items are. Another picture of our Terra Scorcher. Separately required items over here on this side. Separately required items, two channel transmitter, batteries for transmitter, receiver, servo, ESC, electronic speed controller, battery pack, battery charger. Now the vehicle, once again, already comes with an ESC, so we don't need that. Checking out the other side of the box, Terra Scorcher, 110 scale, high performance, four wheel drive, off road racer, Tamiya, 2020. A little picture of our transmission or gearbox. And the opposite side shows the exact same thing. All right, we got the camera off the tripod. Let's get up close and personal with our box here. Here's a peek at our front bumper, our front oil dampers, our front oil filled shocks, our adjustable links for adjusting the toe on our front wheels. Steering links down below, steering stabilizer or sway bar wrapping out and around the front differential. Front differential right here. ESC location. I believe the steering servo is located right underneath that. Receiver location, battery location, battery hold downs on either side. Rear sway bar wrapping out and around the rear transmission or rear differential. Rear oil dampers or oil filled shocks. Once again, adjustable links for adjusting the toe and our pin spike tires. And we've already read all this nonsense here, so no need to go through that again. Once again, another peek at our front differential, front oil filled shocks, half shafts, upper links for adjusting the toe, our rear transmission or rear differential, rear shocks, rear sway bar, motor location, and all that other good jazz. To me, a one tenth scale. All right, getting the box spun around, checking out the other side here, the opposite side. Once again, we got that big diagram of the vehicle. Everything is labeled and numbered one through twenty three. And once again, everything is listed over here on the right-hand side as to what everything is. And then once again, our separately required items. Two-channel transmitter, battery for transmitter, receiver, steering servo. It comes with an electronic speed controller, so you might not need that. 
battery pack, and a battery charger. Once again, Tamiya, 110 scale, yada yada yada. Got the box turned around, looking at one of the small sides. Once again, same image and information on both sides. Let's turn up our brightness a little bit here. Don't want to wash it out, but have the flash turned off. 110 scale, four-wheel drive, Terra Scorcher, 110 scale, high performance, four-wheel drive, off-road racer, 2020 version, Tamiya. And a good look at our rear transmission, or main transmission. Rear differential back here. Counter gear coming off the pinion gear. Little bevel gear on the side, which leads to the prop shaft going up to the front differential. So there's a good peek at that rear differential and transmission area and how everything works back there. And finally, we're back around to the front of the box again. Tamiya, upper left-hand corner. Good look at our vehicle, the Tamiya Terra Scorcher. Once again, very good looking vehicle. Our advertising information here, 110 scale, RC, high performance, re-released and updated version of the 1988 hit buggy. Four-wheel drive off-road racer, probably not so much of a racer, but definitely a good fun buggy. Here's a good look at our bathtub chassis. Our rear transmission differential set, leading up to the bevel gear and prop shaft or half shaft, drive shaft, <laughs> leading up to the front differential and all that other nonsense here. And metal half shafts once again up front, our oil filled shocks fore and aft. Full ball bearings on this kit. Full ball bearings, once again, 17, 11, 50, and four 850 ball bearings included. Also includes an electronic speed controller. Well, that's kind of cool. Not too sure what that ESC is all about. Uh, kind of wondering if it's lithium polymer compatible or not. So we'll do a little bit of research on that when we open up the box and see what that has to say. All right, let's crack this baby open and see what everything looks like on the inside. All right, let's peel the lid off this box and see what everything looks like on the inside. There's absolutely nothing on the bottom of the box. Nothing on the inside of the box. We're going to treat that box very carefully. <laughs> I'm sure there's a joke in there somewhere about that. Taking a look at our inner contents, we'll crank up our brightness just a wee bit here. We have the flash off, just turning up the brightness. This must be our polycarbonate wing or spoiler. Needs to be painted. Checking out our pin spike tires. We'll key our flash on for a second here. Get a better look at our pin spike tires. It does come with an antenna tube down inside the box. So we have a clear antenna tube in there as well. This is the lower portion of our driver. And it also doubles as a shield for the chassis. Uh, like a top cover to keep the servos and ESC and all that stuff protected from the elements. Have a blister pack of chassis parts. Looks like some shock towers and whatnot. Another blister pack with our main rear differential, it appears, and possible front differential halves. Here's our front bumper, pretty shiny. Some of our suspension uprights and other parts. Our lower links for the front A-arms and rear A-arms, along with some uh, battery nerf bars over here or hold downs amongst other parts. <laughs> Checking out our wheels. White plastic wheels, kind of on a blister pack. So we're going to have to cut those little nubs off and shave them down with a razor knife to make those nice and smooth. And the tires get glued onto the wheels. No hex on the back. It takes a Tamiya style hub on the back of it. See if we can get our body out of here very carefully. So here's a picture of our main body. Once again, needs to get painted. I don't know if my niece is looking forward to that or not, the whole painting process. Uh, she likes building little uh, kits and birdhouses and uh, um, painting the little patio stones and things like that that you get from a mindware catalog. She loves doing all that stuff, so we'll see how she does with the polycarbonate body. And this is our main bathtub chassis, right here. Here is the included ESC, all wrapped up in bubble wrap. 
Now, they talk about nickel metal and NICAD batteries with this ESC, but there's no mention of lithium polymers. So I'm not too sure if this is LiPo-friendly or not, but we'll dig into the manual or dig into the ESC and figure that out here momentarily. We have some included stickers, regular stickers for the body, as well as some rally-style sponsor stickers and numbers and all that other good nonsense. So a nice little sticker kit included. Here is a peek at our manual. And my niece will be getting a good look at this here in the next day or two on how to build the vehicle. To me, kits are relatively easy to build. Great for first comers to the RC hobby. Usually make for a relatively simple first time build, not very challenging. All right, so let's get some of this stuff back into the box here. Once again, this is my niece's vehicle, her Christmas present. So we're going to carefully try to get this stuff put back into place. So we got everything pretty much put back into place. I'm not too sure what this little box over here has, if it says anything on that or not. So if there's anything in here, which it is. Yes, we do have stuff inside our little box on the side. Terra Scorcher, 110 scale RC, high performance, four-wheel drive, off-road racer. We released an updated version of the 1988 hit buggy, Terra Scorcher, four-wheel double wishbone suspension with CVA oil dampers, once again, stabilizers, universal drive shaft, grippy spike tires, 540 type motor, shaft driven four-wheel drive. So this guy is a little bit taped up here. We'll peel off some of our tape and take a look at what we're looking at here. Okie dokie. We got a whole stack of parts in here, shock bodies, Transmission gears, steering, knuckles, servo savers, more shock parts. Big parts bag right here, filled with transmission gears, shock parts, shock springs, O-rings, oil for the shocks, uh, all kinds of other hardware in here screws and things of that nature. Digging further in, another parts bag, with some zip ties and double-sided foam tape and other bits of nonsense. We've got our driver's head right there with the helmet. Excuse the lighting, I'm sorry about that, I apologize. Flash or no flash, that is the question. No flash at the moment. And another parts bag right here with all our ball bearings, grease, Pinning gears, another good nonsense in there. Some more shock parts, collars, and uh, different washers for the pistons on the shocks for different rates of flow on your fluid. All right, checking out the motor. I'm not too sure how many turns this is. A Bucci motor, RS540 SH, BD160Y14, made in China. And lastly, we have a prop shaft or a drive shaft that goes from our rear differential up to the front differential. A couple body pins and some other screws. So there we go. There's a little peek at everything that came in that box there. <laughs> All our transmission gears, ball bearings, our driver's head. More hardware. Bits and pieces. All of our shock parts, once again, O-rings and things of that nature. And lots of plastic parts. Shock bodies, shock collars, steering components, servo savers. And there we go. All boxed back up. Checking out our ESC as promised. I almost forgot about this. <laughs> this is a Tamiya... If we can get our camera to focus in, TBLE04S. TBLE04S. And this is a brushed or brushless sensored ESC. So we have three motor wires coming off of here, our battery wire, our S connector going to our receiver, and the on-off switch right here. 
Not too sure if this is LiPo compatible or not, once again. Digging into some paperwork on it. First little pamphlet. Caution, this electronic speed controller ESC is preset to brushed motor mode and not brushless motor mode, as stated in the manual. It is ready to be used with a brushed motor in this kit. So if we go through our manual, we can set this up for a censored brushless motor. LiPo is the question. Can we run a LiPo on this guy? Looking into other warning labels here. No LiPo right there. In different languages. Timia brand electronic speed controllers, ESCs, are designed for use with Timia RC car battery packs. Use of non-Timia battery packs, including lithium polymer products, may risk damage and is not recommended. So they're recommending no LiPos on this pamphlet. That's kind of a telltale sign right there. But let's see if we can find some more information on that. Warning pamphlet number two regarding warranty repair. Do not use with battery products, including lithium polymer battery packs, not recommended by Tamiya. Not recommended. So there we go. There's another telltale sign, a warning label. Looking at our manual for the ESC, programming manual, TBL 04S. Tamiya Brushless Electronic Speed Controller 04S. Looking at our specs for the 04S. ESC, forward brake reverse, max continuous current, 75 amps. Input voltage, 6.6 .6 to 7.2 volts. Now that's a definite telltale right there. 7.2 volts. Most lithium polymers are 7.4 volts. Just to clarify, I was referring to 2S LiPo batteries during this segment. 2S LiPo batteries are 7.4 volts. And the 7.6 volt batteries that I was referring to are the graphene batteries, the new graphene packs. And uh, 7.6 with the other new lithium batteries. Uh, what are they? Lithium graphite or graphite batteries? Uh, one or the other. Anywho, they are putting out just a little bit more. So 6.6 .6 to 7.2 volts tells you right there that you can't run a LiPo on it. Uh, other specs output forward 100%, reverse 50%. Our dimensions, weight 47 grams. Compatible motors, Tamiya brushless motors, censored 15.5 turns or over. Sport tune motors, Tamiya brush motors, 25 turns or over. And receiver output voltage, 6 volts, 1.5 amps. Neutral brake setting, 2 to 5%. Brake output setting, 10 to 100. Reverse function enabled, battery cutoff low, motor brushless mode. So there we go after checking out all our paperwork and the several warning labels and seeing our input voltage right here. We can definitely see that this ESC is not lithium polymer compatible. There we go, we got everything all tucked back inside the box. Put the lid back on and waiting for build day. All right, so we have my niece Rebecca out here. We're working on her, say hello. Hello. <laughs> We're working on her very first RC car kit. She's never built an RC car before. We're working on the Tamiya Terra Scorcher, which I bought her for Christmas. Her very first RC model kit to build. She's built all kinds of Legos in the past. She's quite an accomplished Lego builder. We're just going to take a stab at the Terra Scorcher today. It's her first RC car that she's ever built. So here we go, obviously middle of winter, so we're not going to be able to get around the paint in the sky until spring. But we will be able to get the vehicle built. So right now, she's not really wanting to do much of this on camera since it's her first car. So we'll do a little intermittent camera action here in between. And I will be sitting next to her for this entire build. Right where that plate's sitting at over there. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, basically just give her a hand whenever she needs a hand with anything tough. Moving right along, she is building her first transmission section on the car. And she's doing pretty good. I have to step in every once in a while and help her finish driving in the screws the rest of the way. Some of them are just a little bit too tough for her, so she gets them in as far as she can. And then I just kind of take over and finish driving the screws on. She is working away, and we'll catch back up here in a little bit and see how we're progressing. It's about 8.30 p.m. She's got the rear gearbox slash differential all assembled here. I'm going to kick on the flash and blind her for a second. Zoom in on her work, maybe. Hmm. So she's working on the rear transmission slash gearbox slash differential. <laughs> She's got the motor in it, all the bearings in it, everything's all good to go, and she's just kind of finishing up with a lower A-arm on that side.
Once again, she's a little, little camera shy, so we're going to give her some respect on her first build. So we'll be back in a little bit and check on her progress once more. All right, she's making all kinds of headway here. She has a front clip completely assembled, or the front differential assembled, all her shocks put together. Doing pretty good on that section. Rear section complete. Rear suspension complete. Motor installed. She's got an armpit in her face. <laughs> <laughs> she has all the electronics put in. And this is our progress report. We are still working. She's getting, getting ready to put their differentials onto the chassis. Right now she's finishing up with her steering links. These guys are right here. I'll be double checking the measurements on that, make sure it's all kosher and good to go. And we'll check back in in a few minutes. Day three and my niece has finished her buggy. <laughs> I took a little break from helping her for a little while. I come back inside and she's got the thing all done. Last thing we'd seen on video, rear axle wasn't attached, front axle wasn't attached. She had all the electronics in there. Once again, I came back in from outside from ed editing some video and yeah, she's got it all together and all done. She has a rear axle attached, the front axle's attached, and all good to go. Slight change of venue here. Once again, my niece has finished the car 100% complete, and she did an awesome job, especially for being her first car. Knocked this one right out of the park. Great job all the way around. So once again, niece had finished the car. Uh, to my surprise, <laughs> I gave her a little free time on her own, let her work on her car on her own, came out to the garage, was editing some videos. I did four unboxing videos on Christmas Day, so I had a lot of work to do myself. And when I came back inside the house to refill my coffee, she had the car completely finished. The last we had seen on video, she had the rear transmission built, she had the front differential assembly built, she had all the electronics in the car, but she had nothing attached to the chassis. And when we came back, boom, she had it all done. <laughs> so there we go. Let's take a peek at our car. I've got our flash off, I'm trying to reduce some glare here. But she did a good job on the car all the way around. Let's key our flash on. So we're skews our brightness. The only thing that she didn't do on this car was bleed the shocks. She assembled the shocks, but I filled them up with oil and bled them. For anyone who's ever bled oil-filled shocks or built oil-filled shocks, you know that it can be extremely difficult to bleed the air out of the oil-filled shocks. So I saved her the trouble and did the bleeding on the front and rear shocks for her. But she built them. She did everything else on it. Otherwise, the only other thing that I helped her out with was putting in grub screws, making sure that the grub screws are good and tight, and checking measurements on end links and things of that nature. Just double-checking measurements and making sure that those are all right on the money. Otherwise, she did 100% of the build on her own. The electronics in the car, this is a used set of electronics that we're using in the car. <laughs> we're repurposed, I guess, or uh, reappropriated. We're using a Dynamite Axial AE5L ESC. Underneath that is a Futaba S3003 steering servo, which is a 20 plus year old servo. It's brand new. <laughs> it's just been sitting on a shelf for well over 20 years. For a brand new servo, you probably have a hard time seeing it through the nonsense there, but it's nice and clean, spick and span. For the receiver, we're using a Spectrum SRX200, two channel receiver, and a Spectrum STX. Transmitter. Just leftover hardware that we had laying around on the side that wasn't being used that she could put into the car for the time being. <laughs> or maybe possibly forever. So there we go. She's got all the electronics in it. She did all this on her own as well. The only thing I helped her out with was placement of stuff, like giving her an idea where to put stuff and showing her what sockets the wires got plugged into for steering and throttle. But everything else was done by her. Wire placement and running was done by her. She just kind of shoved them all down there in the corner. Not terrible. I've certainly seen worse. <laughs> she did a pretty good job. Uh, battery, talking about used equipment here, uh, reappropriated equipment. 
This came out of a Feiyu FY06. It's a 3000 milliamp 30C 2S LiPo. So yeah, there's a good look at our car. Once again, 100% complete. Checking out our battery tray for a moment here and our little battery hold down Nerf bars here. This is like a quick, easy access battery tray. If this screw wasn't sitting right here, you could lift this up and spin it off to the right for easy access. I'll put a screw in there to kind of keep that held in place so it doesn't come apart while we're driving it. But the battery tray is large enough to accommodate many different size batteries from 7.2 volts to 8.4 volts. It was built back in the old NICAD nickel metal day. So it's kind of shaped more for a NICAD battery and nickel metal battery, the general shape of the battery tray. But our Nerf bars, our hold down bars, can be moved out further to accommodate longer batteries on either side. So you can put a quite a large battery in there in all reality. The only bummer, once again, is that it's circular cut on the inside of the battery tray. A little half moon right there on either side. So more meant for the shape of a NICAD or nickel metal pack versus a lithium polymer pack. Taking a look at the underside of the car, our lower control arms, A-arms, motor. Once again, not too sure what motor this is, how many turns this motor is. If anybody knows, feel free to chime in and let me know. This Mabuchi motor uh, has the number 14 there. Something 160Y14. I'm wondering if that 14 maybe stands for 14 turns or possibly that's just the end of the serial, serial number. I don't know. I'm just trying to guess at how many turns this thing has in it. But everything is working all right. I'm holding one of the wheels and spinning the rest of them. Everything seems to be working properly. Once again, she did a great job. We had her sway bars. All done up nice. Looking at our upper links for adjusting the toe, front and rear. If you didn't want to mess with these and build the links, the kit did come with plastic arms to go in here as well. So if you don't want to run the regular adjustable links, it did come with the plastic arms that you can put in there to use instead. So just a little FYI a mental note on that. So there we go. The kit is 100% complete. Well, <laughs> not 100% complete. We still need to paint the body. Once again, it is January currently. You can see my breath. Quite cold outside, right around 20 degrees today. So we can't exactly do any kind of spray painting in that kind of weather. We're going to have to wait till spring in order to paint the body on this. But for the most part, the vehicle itself is all done and ready to rock. My niece did an awesome job on this vehicle all the way around. Two thumbs up, Rebecca. You did a great job, especially for your first car. Great job all the way around. Before we go, let's take a quick trip back in time and check out this old school vintage Tamiya brochure or pamphlet. Not sure what year it is, but there's a picture of a mud blaster on here, which is a Blackfoot with a Subaru Bat body on it. A Nissan King Cab. Looks like a pretty cool truck. Chassis looks kind of familiar. Grasshopper. Grasshopper 2, excuse me. A Vanquish. Terra Scorcher. Original. OG. The Avante, which they still make. Excuse the lighting there. Which is a pretty nice buggy. Egress and Astute on the bottom. Cloudbuster here. Mud Blaster once again. That Nissan King Cab. Old school speed controller there, mechanical speed controller. So, yeah, this was a little while ago. There is a Super Saber. Very similar to a Boomerang or a Hot Shot. Hot Shot is Mono Shock front and rear. This one's Mono Shock on the front, Dual Shock on the rear. There is a Thunder Shot. Mono shock on the front. Old school lunchbox. Midnight pumpkin. Looking our pamphlet over. RC racing. Egress. And the astute. Here's a picture of the astute. Two wheel drive. Mechanical speed controller. Picture of a fire dragon. Same chassis as the Terra Scorcher. Pardon me there. Thunder dragon. Same chassis as the Terra Scorcher as well. Lotus Honda. 
similar to a road wizard, identical except for the body. It uh, moves out. If you put a 12 turn motor in it or less, <laughs> they get pretty out of control. This little micro super saber. German King Tiger tank. Sorry about the glare. Checking out the transmission on that tank. A single motor. There is a Toyota Celica rally car, 112 scale. The Egress 110 scale four wheel drive buggy. Electronic speed controller in that one. Midnight Pumpkin QD 114 scale. It's a cute little thing. <laughs> That's what she said. Dash 1 Emperor QD 114 scale. That's pretty fugly. Thunder Dragon QD 114 scale. Rari Testarossa Tamtec 124 scale. Micro. So there we go. There's our quick trip back in time. A peek at our old school pamphlet here. And the OG Terror Scorcher. So that about wraps it up, boys and girls. Very much appreciated for y'all sticking around and watching the video. I'd like to wish you all a late Merry Christmas and a late Happy New Year. And we will see you all on the next video. Thanks again.